Hi everybody and welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. The garage is full. I've got the Camaro right behind me there. And right beside me here, I've got the wonderful and exciting Mazda 5 minivan. Yep, yeah, I know. Time for more Mazda 5 minivan content. You've been asking for it and I'm here to give it to you. I got the minivan up on my quick jacks, which I love, 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 love. Got it for Christmas. And I have done some recent work on this car because it is starting to cause a little bit of trouble. Uh, basically, uh, let me explain. There's a number of issues, of course, but the main problem is the suspension on this vehicle is starting to go. Uh, it was making clunking noises, uh, going over bumps, getting progressively worse. And so I replaced the lower control arms and you may be able to notice that these control arms are brand new brand new and uh, that got rid of some of the noise but by all means not all of the noise and um, yeah so there's still a noise so there's still a problem and I have traced it down tentatively to the inner tie rods I know they don't seem to go very often, but that seems to be where the clunk is. There's a, a vibration coming through the steering wheel, and also when I turn the steering wheel, you can hear a clunk. I shall attempt to demonstrate the clunk. This is just when you got the steering turn. Remember, I'm not going over any bumps at this point, but just listen to this if you can hear it. Hear that? Yes, that clunking noise is what's bothering me. I think that is the inner tie rod ends. So that's what the video is about today. Today, uh, and it could take me a couple days the way I work, but anyway, we're going to replace the inner tie rod ends. Now, of course, they're behind this rubber bellows, and uh, there is a sort of a ball joint here, and I have checked the tie rods ends here, and they're not in bad shape. They're not in bad shape. There's no apparent movement there, so I really don't believe it is the tie rod ends here. I believe it is the inner tie rod ends. These are my new inner tie rod ends. I'll put a link below where you can get these. But basically, they're not expensive. $35 and I got both of them right and left. I think they're the same. And this is the inner tie rod and this is what uh, screws into the actual um, steering rack. And then this actually connects up to your outer tie rod end. Came with the two inner tie rod ends and it also came with these two little guys here they go right over that and once you got everything bolted up you flatten down the edges here so that uh, it can't this can't come loose so it's sort of like a lock is we got it raised up got the wheel off got uh, safety jack stands underneath the car for safety you don't want to be crushed by a car now I do trust the quick jack I do I do but I still have jack stands just in case just in case, right? Uh, first thing we gotta do is take off the inner tie rod ends. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on some WD-40 on to the nut for the outer tie rod and the jam nut right here. So that that will all come loose easily, I'm sure. I'm gonna remove this cotter pin just like just like that. Uh, next step is to loosen the, uh, the jam nuts. Now you want to do that while this is still bolted on. Trying to do it afterwards is going to be really difficult. So you want to loosen that right now. Okay, for the jam nut I'm using a 15, 15 16 wrench. And I've already broken it loose. Took a bit of effort, but now that that's loose, we can go and take the sucker off. Also, I took off the um, the clamp here, and then I sprayed WD-40 underneath the rubber here. That should make it easier to come off. Okay, 14, 14 millimeter, we'll break this loose. Okay, I did loosen the rubber boot. I uh, just used a screwdriver and sort of pried on the uh, the metal clip here, metal strap, and then pulled on it and it came loose. And I want to do that first because I want to measure 
from the center of the tie rod and bolt all the way to uh, the, the surface of the nut that's touching the, uh, the rack right here. And that is what I'm gonna use to set up my new inner tie rod end. So that is roughly the same length as the old inner and outer tie rod end. Therefore, I'll be able to drive the car. Now, I'll still need to get an alignment, but at least it'll be close and I can drive the car to an alignment shop. Uh, also, uh, to get this off, there's the, uh, the hex right here that I'm going to, uh, the flats right here that I'm going to use now. Actually, you can reach this with a wrench. I may not need a special tool. There's a special tool you can buy that will help you get this off, uh, but actually you can get a wrench on here if you have the proper size wrench. Okay, so at least on this side, the, uh, it is possible to get a wrench and I actually have a 30 millimeter wrench, which is the correct size to get this off. Now, I don't know if I'll have enough strength. Of course I have. And I don't know if I'll have enough leverage to get this loose, but I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, so basically, measuring from the center of the shaft of the, uh, of the uh, rack, the rack shaft, to the center of this bolt is 14 inches. Now that I've got that loose, I will take off, of course, this guy. I'm gonna try something a little unusual. I'm gonna try to actually undo the inner tie rod end from the rack here while, while the outer tie rod end is still connected. Is it possible that I could replace the inner tie rod end without ever removing the, the outer tie rod end, which of course I'm reusing, um, from the knuckle. Is that possible? I don't know, let's find out. Just like that. And there you go, I got it off. There's the old inner tie rod end. The, uh, my outer tie rod end is still connected. It's still connected to the knuckle. There's your steering rack. Now, let's uh, take the bellows off of this because I'm gonna reuse that. It's easy. I didn't have to get a special tool to undo that bolt. It is reachable from just by turning all the way. Now the other side, I'm not so sure about, but this side, no special tool. I'm making progress. Okay, here is our new uh, inner tie rod end, and we'll just put everything back together the way it was. Uh, we'll put our bellows over this, like so. Our clamp, and then we have our new nut. That goes on. Okay. Now I am gonna add some uh, grease. There was grease supplied with this kit. I'm gonna add some grease right to the ball. Okay, so first I'm going to uh, install it on the rack first, and then I can turn the steering wheel in enough so that I'll be able to get it on to the uh, outer tie rod. Now the old ones didn't have anything like this, but this is a, a lock tab to make sure this will never ever come loose. There's a uh, little slots here on the rack and these two little tabs are going to fit right in those slots just like so. And then you're going to screw in your uh, inner tie rod end and after everything is done and tightened up, you're going to use a um, a tap or a hammer to hammer down the edges to make sure that it will never come loose. Uh, and uh, also it's a good idea to use a little bit of uh, red Loctite on these threads just to make sure it doesn't ever come loose. So as, as you tighten this, make sure that you can feel that your, uh, this little washer's in the tabs. There you go. And then just make that finger tight. Now we got to thread this on to the tie rod end. And to do that, I'm going to get the rack 
and uh, turn the steering wheel and get that to go inside. And that will give me enough room to start threading this on. I have threaded the inner tie rod end into the outer tie rod uh, to the point where I'm at. I'm at 14 inches from, from, from here to the mounting surface to of the, uh, the center of the, of the shaft, mounting surface to the rack, all the way to the center of the tie rod and bolt. Got me close to where I should be, and there we go. Now, uh, I've tightened this nut, and I can't remember what torque value for that is, but anyway, tighten this nut, and gotta tighten this nut, and this again doesn't have a torque value, just has to be uh, nice and tight. In other words, snug it up, and then maybe, maybe a quarter turn, maybe less, but anyway, snug it up. Uh, use a, uh, a punch to push this, these uh, flanges over so that the nut will not come loose. And then what could be the hardest part is I've got to get this end of the bellows back over there. And that might be hard. Now it's time to add some grease that came with the kit. So this is going to go uh, all around this uh, little ball joint right here. Okay, using my small sledge and a tie rod pickle fork. I have bent over a bit, as you can see right there. Yes, you can see. Uh, I bent that over the, um, the, the hex of the nut a little bit. That will prevent it from coming loose in the future. Um, and that's all you gotta do. Yep. Okay, this side is done. Done, 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 done. Okay, so I did get the bellows back on and I reused the metal uh, strap at the end there. Reuse the metal strap. I don't recommend that you do that. I think uh, a proper metal strap with the proper pliers that will attach it, or some people use a zap strap, a zip tie. Um, I reuse the metal strap. I'm hoping that'll stay on. And of course, I've got it secured here, and the bolt, as you saw already, is tightened inside with a lock, uh, lock plate. And this bolt is tight. And this bolt is tight. I, there's no specifications I could find for this bolt. I put it at about 40 foot pounds. Don't forget to put the cotter pin back on. On to the other side. Okay, on this side, on the driver's side of the Mazda 5, I'm gonna do it the same way I did it on the other side as fast as possible. And I'm gonna see how fast I can do it right now, starting right now. Okay, on this side, I'm hoping there's where the inner tie rod bolts on to the rack, there's the rack as you can see right there. Um, I think I'll be able to take this off as long as it's not on too tight because my giant, my giant wrench will fit on and I can apply some pressure there. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to measure like I did on the other side from this surface where it's contacting the, uh, the rack at the, in the middle of the shaft. From here, I'm gonna measure from here all the way to the center of this bolt. And then I'm gonna to try to, after I get the new inner uh, tie rod end in, I'm gonna to try to replicate that length. That will, again, like I said before, allow me to drive the car safely to the alignment shop. Okay, and just like the other side, that works out to be 14 inches. So that's the measurement that I'm trying to maintain here. Oh. Oh. That's not good. This one's tighter. This one's tighter, oh no. I did it. I did it. All right. And of course, we have to reuse our bellows. So we make sure that this has no cracks. It looks like it's okay. And then here is our inner tie rod. See, it's a little bit loose. I don't know how, if it's really that loose, but I guess it's a little loose. Now we just undo it.
Now I'm going to reuse this bellows, of course, but I'm also going to reuse this metal strap. It seems to have worked for me on the other side. And of course, we're going to put grease in there, fill up full of grease before we do our final uh, tightening and everything else. But we'll put this on for now. Okay, I'm now threading the inner, the new inner tie rod in into the outer tie rod. I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to start measuring it. And when I get to 14 inches, that will mean I'm in the right ballpark. I've added some um, rack grease on the rack itself and also the grease that came with the kit on the ball joint of the inner tie rod end. And i am got the uh, jam nut all tightened up. Now I just got to put the boot on and then we're done. Okay, I've got the bellows on. It seems to be holding it position. I've got the clamp on at the front of the bellows. Everything is tightened. And that uh, little lock washer that I put on, I bent over part of the tabs or bent over an edge. And that's what you do to make sure that uh, the inner tie rod end won't come off the rack. Everything appears to be tight. I got close to 14 inches or at 14 inches and so that should allow me to drive it to the alignment shop and there we go. This job is done. Inner tie rods are done. Okay, so the job is done. I have finished replacing the inner tie rod ends on a 2009 Mazda 5 minivan. It was very exciting. I'm sure you agree. Now, the thing is, uh, there's other videos that show how to do this, probably better than mine of course. Um, but they don't show you how you can do it without a special tool and without taking your outer tie rod ends off. I have just shown you how you can do it. The wrench that you need to do it, you can reach the inner tie rod end nut if you have a 30 millimeter wrench. So you will need a 30 millimeter wrench, but it can be done without renting or buying a special tool and without taking the tie rod ends off, which sometimes causes damage and anguish and pain and resentment. So there you go. Thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage, and I will see you later. And for more exciting Mazda 5 content, please subscribe. Thanks.